It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Duh. Y'all really thought I was gonna reveal my map that fast? As we all know, KU has a very boring map as of right now. It hasn't changed since 2020, besides a few minor map changes to some of the islands, and it's been the same for three years. It is very bland, it is very dull, the islands are very similar to each other, and there's nothing unique like between them. There's nothing really, you know, going on on those islands and stuff there's not really ambience like i know there is ambience but there's really like nothing happening there's no boats like going around in the oceans there's no birds chirping there's lack of biome variety the only other like biome we have besides just plain old sand and grass is antarctica but you know in and of itself that i'm embarrassing is very you know there's not really much happening around these islands besides you know players stomping around beating the shit out of each other as usual you know casual monday in tokyo in my right chat and there's not really much to destroy there's only trees that really don't are just they're just there there's nothing going for trees they're literally just there and the buildings huh, the buildings are kind of terrible for today's standards what was my goal for this video my idea was to envision a KU map that every Kaiju Universe player would love to see in the game. But, you know, I had to... When I was developing this map concept, I really had to think of the limitations that the devs have. Like, you can't, like, make an entire Fortnite map in Roblox. Pursue Fortnite. So, like, that's what the limitations are. So, I tried to think of something that could work. But also that could be, you know, more advanced. Like, like it's a concept. I'm not going to be like on point. Without further ado, I'm going to be going over how to make the Kaiju Universe map better than ever. Or, you know, the dream Kaiju Universe map. And here it is. This is the full thing. You know, it took me a while. To, you know, it took a while. I mean four days. This I'm going to be going over each point of interest on this map individually. I fleshed out each POI to make them more unique, different from each other, and also give each POI a draw factor that, you know, makes the player actually want to go there, besides it being the popular hotspot on the map. I decided to take Japan as a location in a very different direction as we have now. Tokyo is right currently is just a horseshoe with a bridge and two big ass cities like there's nothing really going on so what i decided for japan is make it a like a cherry grove based biome there's going to be cherry trees you know the traditional japanese theming and styling of buildings in landscaping so you know you're gonna have that on this poi the land is like i based japan like the island shape off of actual Japan so you know it's very narrow besides the main city in the center because you know that's gonna be the draw to uh, players you know they're gonna be going in there for the city alone to you know fight it off you know explore the map maybe just stuff like that I decided to include some traditional landmarks for Japan I put Osaka castle on you know the top part of the island you know if you know the original Godzilla vs Kong where they destroy the castle and then they before they fall into the ocean I think y'all know what I'm talking about the Tokyo Tower is in the main city there's a lot of harbors in the city as well you know there's gonna be cargo ships docked there's gonna be cranes lots of cargo containers and stuff like that there's gonna be a lighthouse in the bottom part which is a reference to the Rita source and you know whatever that movies called <laughs> And the Rainbow Bridge from, you know, actual Tokyo is going to be replacing the bridge we have now in the current map. So, you know, that's Tokyo for you. So for Isle Damara, you know, I based the island itself off of the concept art we got a, a year ago at this point, I think. You know, that's never coming to the game, let's be honest, guys. So I based it off of that. It's the, I think it's the largest map, I think it's the largest island in this concept, either that or Antarctica, which I'll get to soon, but 
you know, I decided to make it grand, it's, you know, retains, you know, that, be, like, the large factor, lots of land to it, it's a, it's a big shrubland biome in it, in it of itself, so, what I went off of was, uh, I decided to include two large towns, one one being on the coast with a more ocean-based architecture and lifestyle. There's a bunch of ships. There's a har there's a harbor, a big harbor, <laughs> similar to the one we have now. There's a Manila EX statue, cause um, why not in one of the towns? I don't know which one. I really don't want to specify. There's the volcano from King of the Monsters. There, of course, Outpost 56, which is going to be on top of the volcano. It's not just going to be a gaping hole, there's going to be the outpost where Rodan bursts out of in the movie. There's going to be rivers and lakes dotting around the island, you know, stuff like that. And beaches, like in the current map. Here's the draw factor of this, of Isla de Mara for this map. The volcano can erupt and cause an atmosphere change to the surrounding area. You know, make it all dark, gloomy, all that stuff, like ash clouds and stuff. Even if this idea does get used or mentioned by the devs, I don't think, I think it's out of their league, because, you know, it could be too complicated with the coding and stuff like that, but yeah, that's usually the Mara. So, Hong Kong is one of the new locations I decided to put on this map. It's a temperate biome. Like, there's not much going on on the outside besides the giant city. You know, it's just some rocky hillsides and some trees. Like, there's nothing really there besides, you know, the big-ass city that's the draw factor. The, so, the main interest of this POI, as we all know, is the big-ass Eon City. You know, that's gonna look really nice. So, during the day, the buildings are, you know, not very lively. They just look like, you know, regular remodeled buildings all nice and cool but if you have you know day and night cycle or have your time set to night the city will glow neon and have the lights go on like you know similar to like a you know the gvk the gvk fight so similar to that the neon lights will create a, you know a cool little you know be beautiful neon light dimly lit atmosphere that will make the kaijus look cool as shit in my opinion you know, think of the Godzilla vs. Kong scenes, you know, think of Godzilla being in the city, that's what your kaiju could look like in, you know, this map remodel, so... I also, you know, Hong Kong could also include the Apex Pyramid where Mecha Godzilla burst out of in the movie, so... That's something going for it, I guess. And Hong Kong is basically just a really cool POI I came up with. Florida, Florida, Florida. Oh, man. So, I decided to revamp Florida a lot in this concept. So, it's a relatively small island. I base it off of actual Florida, wouldn't you know? So, the shape of the island looks like Florida. You know, not much here besides some small lakes, rocky beaches, and includes a small town. I don't know if I want... I think I want to make Florida the new, uh... Promedia, like an industrial base city. That's what the small town, in my opinion, could look like. And there's a large car cargo harbor with uh, docked ships and cranes, you know, similar stuff to Tokyo. And I guess it's just, you know, the new small forgettable island that no one really goes to unless, you know, they're there for the spawning feature. So you can just run back to Tokyo, I guess. And yeah, that's about it for Florida. I didn't really have much besides that. But another newcomer is uh, Egypt. You know, it's the new desert POI I thought of. It's uh, notably the only desert POI, as you may see. So it's a medium-sized island with a lot to explore and destroy on it. And some notable landmarks are going to obviously be the Pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx. Because it's Egypt, guys. You know, they're there. <laughs> you know? I think, I want to have it so you could destroy the Sphinx and the Pyramids, but, you know, that's up to the devs if they want to have a desert in their remodel of the map. The Nile River is also here. It separates the, you know, main, the main, like, land of Egypt in multiple sectors. 
there's cacti and palm trees that decorate the savannas of the island. In, you know, there's some sand dunes, you know, to, you know, provide the vibe. And there's going to be some oil fields. Think of, like, the outpost where Scylla burst out of, you know. There's going to be some, like, oil fields on one part of this island and some other stuff like that. There's some oasis. Oasi? <laughs> oasis is dotted around the island. And uh, two major towns connected by a bridge. So, that's all for Egypt, in my personal opinion. I really like how Egypt turned out, in my opinion. <laughs> it looks really cool, but, you know, hopefully there's a desert POY in the devs is my remodel. For Skull Island, this was a major stepping stone in my creation of this map remodel. So, it's similar to the one in the Monsterverse. Like, it's a big-ass island with a bunch of, like, stuff on it. Players could actually warrant going to Skull Island more because, you know, there's stuff to do on it. So, it's the second largest island on this map. Skull Island can contains, as I said, a lot of different regions seen in the Monsterverse movies. <laughs> Notably looks like Skull Island this time and not a big ass blob. Like, I don't even know what this like, current Skull Island is supposed to look like. It doesn't look like Skull Island to me. So that's what I, that's, so that's what I went for. There's a lot of landmarks I included on this Skull Island. So, there's a, you know, the Boneyard from the Kong Skull Island, you know, where Kong's dead parents and the humans fight the, the, the juvenile skull crawler and stuff like that. There's a massive lake in the center of Skull Island, perfect for, you know, the different kinds of species and players, you know, that wander over there. There's massive jungles that decorate and dot the many different parts of Skull Island. There's a swamp chunk of the island. It's a reference to where Kong fought Ramorak and, you know, with the sunken ship and stuff like that. There's large rocky plateaus and cliffs. Great, they're perfect areas for Kongs, you know, to climb up and get, you know, the jump on other players. Perfect for that. There's a sunken shipyard on one part. There's long, pleasant beaches and stuff. There's a bamboo forest that allows Mother Long Longleg players to hide spotlessly. You know, if you're Godzilla, you can probably spot a mother longleg. There's a large mountain, like in front of the lake I mentioned before, that is shaped like a skull and has waterfalls flowing out of the eyes. As as I mentioned in the last fixing KU episode, if you were there for that, I mean, 60,000 if you watched the video, so I think you were there for that. So. Skull Island would have, you know, Skull Crawler NPCs, Mother Longleg, and Skirt Buffalo NPCs across this island. So, to give life to the island, you know, like, you know, just, you go in there, you see some Skull Crawlers in the Boneyard, that, like, that would be so cool. You, you know, you go in there, you kill some Skull Crawler NPCs, and it gives you the same rewards as if you were to kill a regular player. So, you know, I really wanted to focus on Skull Island being a priority. Because really no one goes there, like, but there's no spawn points, there's no nothing. Like, it's really only there for tournaments and other events people host, but you know. Skull Island got a major change for my map remodel. Next is, uh, Monster Island, which is, you know, formerly Birth Island, so I decided to name change and completely change Birth. Its landmass takes the shape as, a uh, the silhouette of Godzilla's head or a monster or something like that. Birth was really well known for being a place where people can chill, a pop it was a popular tournament area for people. It's just an overall peaceful area. I kept those attributes when making the redesign. So Monster Island will be the peaceful chill zone of the map for this map. Filled with large lakes, dotted with jungle mountain tops, waterfalls would be all over, like dotted around. Just an overall pleasant and peaceful atmosphere that would just calm anyone after a fight. If you walk in there, you just take in the scenery, in my personal opinion. Like, that's how I, you know, think it would feel like. It's, uh, there's large open areas besides the jungles and mountains that uh, are perfect for planning battles and tournaments and stuff. And the Mothra Egg from Birth is now relocated in the center of the main lake, so, you know, keeping consistency. And, I don't know if I would keep the temple from current Birth, so, you know, that's just... I was thinking of making that a separate POI, but, you know, I really like how Birth came out. 
out. It looks really cool. Speaking of large changes, Antarctica is, uh, you know, I changed Antarctica to make it, you know, unique and, you know, fit in with the other islands, have it give it its own attributes and stuff, so, Antarctica, I think I made it the second largest island on this map, and Antarctica in the current map had the major flaw of just being a boring blue-white wasteland with, you know, notable, recognizable landmarks like the, uh, outpost where King Ghidorah burst out of King of the Monsters and the, in the, what's it called? The Sanctum, the Sanctum, that's what it's called. So, I changed it, so, Antarctica is shaped like Antarctica. Wouldn't you know? And, uh, yeah, I made it a very cool POI. I really liked how Antarctica came out here, so, it's notable, so this Antarctica is now notable for having several large ice lakes that are frozen over around this island, and there's multiple arctic research facilities you can destroy and stuff, you know, more, you know, lively stuff, you know, make their, a point in actually visiting Antarctica. There's Outpost 32 from King of the Monsters, and also has the whole hole where Ghidorah burst out of, you know, stuff like that. You know, but most notably looks more accurate to the movie because, you know, uh oh, current KU's map has a very shitty reconstruction, so, you know. The Hollow Earth entrance from GVK is here as well, at the tippity top of the map. So, I'm gonna probably dive into the Hollow Earth in a different video. Like, let me know if you want to see that, but, yeah, that's there for future notice, and, uh, yeah. So, also, the su the Sanctum, I moved it from the Antarctica to its own little sub poi on the bottom, its own, its own little ice chunklet on the bottom of Antarctica, so I'll go over that later, but the island can also have its, uh, Antarctica can also have its own weather, you know, it has frequent blizzards that can reduce the sight of, like, kaijus that fight there, and can make for some cool, like, shots and images, like, you know, the stuff in King of the Monsters where Godzilla fights King Ghidorah and stuff like that, so yeah, that's Antarctica. <laughs> Alright, now for the nitty gritty miscellaneous stuff. So, I'm gonna be going over the smaller stuff and notable features I had in mind. So, the Sanctum is, you know, a frozen tundra POI. You know, I mentioned it in the last part where it's just a small little ice chunklet. The Sanctum is very notable for being a met for being the method of obtaining Cleric Mudo. At first, it was a cool location that was coded really well. It's probably the best part of KU. Honestly, when Halloween comes back, it's still the best part of KU, but the location for what it's supposed to be isn't as grand as it's, you know, as it's intended, so my reimagining of the Sanctum would be located on, you know, this, as I mentioned, like 17 times, it's on its own little snowy island outside of Antarctica. The Sanctum itself on the outside would be this grand gothic castle covered in old age and snow. Like, it's pretty sick looking, like, for my reference image I'm looking at. But outside the castle, there would be the gates to the arena where the King of the Hill minigame is held. But instead of grand doors, it's a giant hole in the ground that leads down right into the arena. The hole would be locked tight by a steel trap door, preventing players from getting inside until the timer, like, you know, similar mechanics to the current map, hits zero and y'all you know, the trap doors open and y'all flood in there, so. The arena itself would be changed to have a throne at the end of a long hall, reminiscent of the area where you fight the boss from Bloodborne, where Cleric Mudo was originally based off of. So, you know, the, the throne would have a circular floor where the capture point would be, similar to, you know, the, the current Sanctum, so. So yeah, that's uh, my reimagining of the Sanctum, and I'm pretty sure this is a very sick POI. And I don't know if I want to make the Sanctum like a year-round thing, but, you know, like, you know, just remove, like, Cleric Mudo being a requirement until, like, Halloween, but, you know, that's it, that's it, that's the Sanctum, in my opinion. So Clockwell is a taiga biome with pine trees and, you know, different types of foliage and stuff like that. 
Clockwell had one of the more interesting concepts as a point of interest. I liked it when it was at the center of the map on an iceberg where kaijus can just gather around and wait for the clock to strike 12. And Santa Godzilla appears, but I like the creativity around Clockwell Isle. It's so interesting, and I really wish they could have stayed around year-round. I changed Clockwell to a, you know, a sweet, like a small German-Swedish town, like something you would find in like the Alps region in Europe. So I based the town off of that. It doesn't really have much going for it. You can destroy the town and besides the clock tower because, you know, significance, but it's a spot where people can show, I guess. That's what it could be. I have a safe zone, but I'm not going to get into that can of worms. So there would be a Christmas tree in the center of town that gains ornaments and lights during the Christmas event. And speaking of, during Christmas, when the whole map the whole map is covered in snow, Clockwell will spark to life, get those giant candy canes and presents from, you know, the current Clockwell. You know, have like, you know, the Christmas lights all over the buildings and stuff. Have it more festive, makes it look like the, uh, the backdrop for the Nutcracker. And when the clock strikes 12 and it's time for Santa Zilla to appear during the holiday, the bells from the clock tower will be able to be heard across the entire map, which signals <laughs> Santa Zilla's here. So, for new players, I don't know, there could be like a tiny pop up that says, oh, Santa Zilla's here when the bells ring, but like, there's obvious, obvious solutions to that. As you can tell, I tried to base the holiday locations off of notable, off of the notable holiday kaiju that were introduced with, like the Bloodborne Gothic Castle stuff for Cleric, in the snowy hillside town for Nutcracker. So for the Mariana Trench, yeah, it's a very bland and boring ass POI right now. So for the Mariana Trench, it's obviously in this map remodel, it's going to be the deepest part of the KU's ocean. Its floor contains a bunch of sunken ships and magma pools that spawn lots of bubble particles that pull you closer to the seafloor, similar to Minecraft. In a cave system within the trench, you will uncover the ruined Seatopia from Godzilla King of the Monsters. You can swim out of the tunnels and rise from the water to explore this location on, on foot, making this the first underground location in KU. The Seatopian city is a small, compact area and is dotted with many statues, lava falls, and pools of steaming water nearby. This location can be used as a 1v1 fighting arena. Just make sure Dr. Serizawa doesn't detonate a thermonuclear bomb in fight. For the, you know, the smaller stuff, like around the map, you can find multiple shipwreck yards across the seabed, and you can find slow-moving aircraft carriers and, like, cargo ships and random tugboats that actually move across the ocean and stuff like that. You could probably destroy them too, but UI I wanted to add, like, f this can go for the current, like, the current KU map as well, but, like, this is just a, you know, quality of life feature. There could be a tab on the right side of the screen with, like, in-game with all the other blue, like, other blue tabs like the control lock button so you could just click that and it comes up with the like a hud of like the map so we can zoom in zoom out you can turn off py names add waypoints that you know sh like if you make a waypoint like there's a big ass orange beacon that can show you where your waypoint is and you can just you know go over to it yeah it's just really a nice quality of life feature and stuff like that in my personal opinion this would be really good for new players and current players so yeah Overall, I really love how this map turned out, and I really want this map in the game to a degree. Because, you know, it's leagues better than what we have in the game right now, obviously. But, but would a map like this ever be brought into the game? Definitely not! The devs have their own agenda of doing things, and their map remodel would probably be leagues different than something I come up with. And, and besides all that, they probably wouldn't even scoff at this video saying, Oh, it's just another dumb map suggestion. So yeah, even if you guys somehow convince them to even looking at this video and considering this map concept, they would probably never add all the features I suggested, because some of them could be too complicated to be pulled off in Roblox. And with the limited resources with the devs have right now, I'm... I'm not sure if they can even pull off something like this. It's maybe too ambitious for them. The point of this video was to highlight the flaws of the Kaiju Universe map as little as I dived into that. You know, I at least want the devs to do something more creative, unique, and fun for their big map update if it ever happens. And hey, if they never do it, we can still have this dream map to reminisce on. 
what every KU player would wish on a star for an actually decent KU map sometime in the future. As much as I quote unquote bash the devs, I don't dislike them, I don't hate them, I'm just frustrated at them for where they're taking the game, and I want my cries to improve this game and make it fun for everybody to be answered. But sadly, they'll never they never will because because the devs and their partnered creators would have more important things to promote than a little map concept that could probably be leagues better than anything they have ever done so whatever i want a ku map that's better than ever when they do get around to that update so i'll just see you guys later it's been this is a very long ass recording so i'll just see you in the next one